Hello, my name is Mark Boyer and this is part two of uh, uh, explanation on my pamphlet of Occupy World and uh, for a media general strike. And uh, basically a report should be done. Uh, to our knowledge, uh, 700 and some odd cities are online for having the May Day strike happen or do something in their communities because uh, <clears throat> it's the springtime and uh, it's a much better time to do a strike, okay? <laughs> and if they've forgotten about us, then we haven't forgotten about the fact that we're trying to get emotion through. Okay, the Occupy movement wants to change everything and that's exactly what's being offered uh, with this proposal. The reality is, is as it says in the, you know, the last time I spoke about the first side and the third side and the fourth page, but you know, in, the, in, in between that, there's this greater issue that needs to be addressed. And that's everywhere in the world. The fact that at least 40% of all jobs in the last 15 years simply don't exist anymore because a computer is doing it or a robot is doing it. And uh, if the market had their own way, 80% of all jobs will be gone in 10 years. And uh, that's good for the economy. Uh, computers, work, computers and uh, robots work for nothing, 24-7, and that's all there is to it. Now the reality is, is authority are sucked into the reality that this is true, this happens, and uh, they're calling us worthless eaters, okay? Because we they don't have a J-O-B for us, okay? A job is what everybody seems to think is their cure. And 80% of humanity really doesn't have a job in the very near future. And somehow we're supposed to fight for the last job, for the lowest wage, and each other. Because yeah, without a job, you're worthless, okay? You're worthless. You're, you're, you're worthless. You're a worthless eater if you don't have a J-O-B. Well, I'm, uh, you know, this is their attitude because that's the way the market economy works. Now, the reality is, is uh, when 80% of people have no work, uh, that's called the leisure state. It's an essential element at returning paradise on earth. Uh, but exactly as the prophecy, they're consumed by the spirit of death and they're trying to kill us off. And it's worse than that. The third and fourth generation of a curse of the second commandment are stuck in the spirit of death. And they'd rather kill us through a World War II scenario, nuclear war that's going to start off with a two, Thessal Thess two Thessalonians two scenario, which is this guy who's the lawless one, uh, the Obama nation that causes desolation, who is in a place where he doesn't belong. That's a Matthew 24 thing. But this guy, the lawless one, will perform all kinds of fraudulent miracles and wondrous signs, harp and project movie, that will suck in all these people who believe a lie and delight in wickedness and will be destroyed when my Jesus Jesus Christ returns in a cloud you know with all his angels and destroys all those who hate him to the glorious freedom of all those who love him sounds like a good plan to me yep sounds like it's necessary so let's push some buttons okay you know and that's what I'm doing uh, you know, bottom line is, uh, uh, that's just the way it is. Now the reality is, is we the people, the only way we can show that we can accept the life of leisure is uh, workers of the world relax. Just don't go to work. Apparently, if you protest now in the United States, uh, they can throw you in jail indefinitely forever. But can they throw you in jail for having a barbecue in your backyard with your family and friends and your neighbors instead of going to work? Come on, think about it. We're supposed to have a way to conquer with love. And obviously that's done, not done, 
with a revolution where we pick up guns and start shooting our politicians. It's just not the way it's done. You can't conquer with love. And basically, what I'm doing is with this world amnesty, pro, you know, a world amnesty. Let's shake your head, okay? The reality is, is if we don't offer our leaders and authority amnesty in return to going back to true constitutional law, uh, it'll never happen. Because as soon as they go back to true constitutional law, they'd have to throw themselves into jail. That's real. And it's not going to happen unless we offer amnesty. Now, by offering amnesty, we literally are outlining the, second, the, the Lord's Prayer. Okay? The Lord's Prayer says we must forgive our trespassers in order to be forgiven our trespasses. And in this way we'll be delivered from our hour of evil of a 2 Thessalonians 2 scenario. And uh, that's what I have outlined in uh, what's called my petition with Parliament, which I filed yesterday. And um, that's part two of part two. Now, let's talk about part two of part two, which is a petition that I got signed. And this petition was uh, uh, inspired by uh, a guy called David McGinty, uh, an MP in Ottawa, who points out that the average Joe just simply can't ask a question from anyone, the higher ups in government. You have to bring it through your MP and uh, word it in this specific way with all these clauses. And he gave all the links to do this. And I was inspired uh, by doing this. So. Uh, I, 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 I'm pretty good at law. So I, I looked at it and I formulated within the parameters of what they asked, uh, how it has to be worded, and I gave it a good shot, okay? And I'll, you know, basically, I'll read it here, okay? And it's to the House of Commons under the Government of Canada in order to address an issue, uh, the following issue of international importance in the House, namely, in order to seek remedy and avoid a general May Day strike. Now, according to their rules, 45 days after I land, this lands, they have to bring this up in the House. And that brings it up the day before. Uh, the May Day strike. Isn't that cool? Timing is everything. Okay, now, this petition requests the House of Commons to take a chance on love and embrace the notion to return to true constitutional law by holding a one-day open and frank debate on the floor of the House with the Prime Minister Stephen Harper and or his Justice Minister on this notion to offer general amnesty to everyone who's been sucked into a never-ending pit of liability created by Section 33 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. This offer is in order to fulfill the hope of the Lord's Prayer of creating an opportunity to, opportunity to have our trespasses forgiven as well as forgive our trespassors in order to deliver us from a ver an ever-increasing and imminent threat of evil as outlined in 2 Thessalonians 2. So that was filed and with Libby Davies' office because that's my writing. Technically all I needed was 25 signatures of any resident of Canada and uh, I upped the ante on that. I said I had to have 25 citizens of Canada and, indivi and individuals in the jurisdiction of Vancouver East who are constituents represented by Libby Davies. And we seek the order, a remedy in order to meet the requirements established by the rules and practices of the House that were all spilled by a guy called David McKinney. Thank you. By, hope, up, by holding our MP responsible to press our petition onto the clerk of petitions for certifications and solicit support so that such a debate occurs in special session of the House, if need be. Now, these special requests say you can have an expenditure of money, and a special session of the House would cause that. Okay? Now, 
within the stipulated time frame of 45 calendar days in order to avoid a general May Day strike. Now, they either ignore this, shun it, stick it in the closet, you know, and do nothing about it, which is actually what I expect them to do. But you never know. Yeah, you really never know, you know. But, you know, and if they do, I guess it never happened. You know, oh, but Mr. Burr, you forgot to dot, dot, dot your eyes. Uh, uh, the fourth person down here uh, didn't put their apartment number. Uh, uh, the, we can't read. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, it's just not good enough. Uh, goodbye. They can do that. But then they're missing the chance to conquer with love. Isn't that good? Okay? And that happens anytime. You know, bottom line is, what I'm trying to do between now and May, you know, and May Day is uh, everything set up for Isaiah 59, where it says, God, you know, that we're, we live in a world consumed in violence, and there seems to be no one who will help the messenger do it, you know, and nobody will lift a finger. So God puts on his helmet of salvation, his breastplate of righteousness, and his cloak of vengeance, and descends on the world with a league of his angels in a cloud. Now you know what? That sounds like a solar flare. In fact, every prophecy of our end times sounds like a solar flare. That's all there is to it. Okay? And if these assholes really fear going to jail, they're going to push the buttons to cause World War III. And in order to do that, they got to pull off the biggest, you know, uh, false flag that the world has ever seen. And that's clearly outlined in 2 Thessalonians 2. You know, fraudulent miracles and wondrous signs caused by harp. Okay? And Project Bluebeam. If you don't know about those, look it up. Okay? That's all there is to it. And if they insist that they hate God, which is the second commandment, he promises to punish all those who hate God. The way I read it, there's got to be someone who's punished for this because the year of my Lord's grace expired three days, four days ago. Okay? And uh, if they don't believe it, well, that's prophecy. Okay? You know, bottom line is, in the last year, way back on August 2nd, uh, there's a strong argument that I'm blessed as to Daniel's 12. And I did a video on that a while back. Go check it out. But, you know what? In order for them to be saved, all I have to do is instill it into someone with authority to say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And you know what? They can snuff this message so nobody hears it. Those who hear it can stick fingers in their ears so that they don't hear it. And they can cloud their brain by using another glass of fluoride infested water to make sure your brain is confused. But you know what? As to Romans 11, or at the end of Romans 10 into 11, it says there that, you know, how can they not know when they haven't been given the message? How can they, you know, you know, how can they be taught when there are no teachers? Well, of course they know, okay? Now, what I'm trying to do by asking for a special session is to make an in that day scenario. And if they wanted to wait till the last day, then you, they better pray that somebody doesn't start World War III between now and then. Because that's a two Thessalonians toe thing, and they missed the mark. Okay? And missing the mark is actually the definition of sin. Okay? It's not this, you know, screwing your neighbor's wife. You know, no, 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 that, 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 that's a sin too. But, you know, Missing the mark is the, uh, the kindest interpretation of sinning. And Jefferson said it very clear, you know, that we would be reduced to mere automatons of misery, only knowing sinning and suffering 
and the forehorse to this is public debt that's destroyed, throwing everyone out of their houses and wreaking havoc on the economies of the world. Another thing the Obama nation that causes desolation causes. And you know what? And it's all being, these scenarios are done by people who also read the Bible. Okay? The reason we have these things is because they read the Bible and they're fixing the deck so that it happens. So someone out there did this so that good could result, which is Romans 3. I just can't find them. Okay? Now, the prophecy says the voice from the West is done. And that's exactly what this petition is. It's the voice from the West. And as far as I'm concerned, the best case scenario now is uh, uh, Isaiah 59. And uh, because I really, really, really can't help but think that a rebellion by those in authority would still be the bloodbath of a lot of people who say no. Now, as I said, last year was the year of grace. This year is not. This year it's over, real quick and easy, to the glorious freedom of everyone in mankind, and I promise you, it's the greatest show on earth. You'll never see a shaking of the world like it's seen, and you'll never see it again. At least that's what it's built as being. And if somebody thinks they don't want this to happen, is a clear indication that they know they're on the wrong side. And it boils down to which side you're on. And that's exactly what I'm doing. And uh, that's all there is to it. So basically I'm going to pull out this video and maybe it'll end up in, uh, like everything else, being censored on censored on censored on censored by Facebook, YouTube, and all their dirty tricks to keep me from getting the word out. And that would be exactly what Romans 10 says. And, you know, they have to do everything in the Bible. because, that, And you know what? If everything in the Bible has to happen, that means all this shithole has to happen too. Well, let's play. That's all I can say. If you hate God, God hates you. Okay? And, you're, if you, and how do you prove that you don't hate God? Well, don't repent. Don't change your way of thinking. Don't do anything. Because Matthew 24 says... You're going to stand still. You're going to stand there and not do a thing and be destroyed. Because that scenario happens before Jesus Christ returns. And I know my interpretation of the Bible is not your interpretation of the Bible, but I'm allowed mine. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm blessed. So says Daniel's 12. Because on the 1335th day, nothing happened. But three days after that, a boulder the size of Texas came between the earth and the moon. And that might mean you're blessed too. But only if you repent. And if the message doesn't get out, well, a whole bunch of people who could have won't have a chance. But that's the game they want to play. And uh, thank you very much. And may God bless.